Hello and welcome to the programme. It's been one of Europe's more complicated elections to predict, and opinion polls for weeks put Croatia's two main parties neck and neck. Now it's clear that the conservative Croatian Democratic Union will retain its hold on Parliament. The party of Prime Minister Andrei Plenković has secured 68 of the 151 seats in Parliament, but that's still eight seats short of an outright majority. Well, their main rivals, the centre-left Social Democrats, are trying to see if they can manufacture an unlikely coalition. Jorgen Samso reports. A comfortable win, but not an outright majority, to the centre-right Croatian Democratic Union, the HD said, and the sitting Prime Minister, Andrei Plenković. According to the polls, the HD said secured close to or more than 70 mandates yet still shy of a handful or more to occupy more than half the seats in the Croatian parliament. This is a big victory today, but also a huge obligation. We had a difficult mandate, and the challenges that lie ahead are even bigger. At the headquarters of the other main party in Croatian politics, the rivaling Social Democratic Party in the Restart Coalition, there was disappointment with a result of just over 40 parliamentary seats. It's not easy to speak after this kind of voting result. Coronavirus infections are on the rise in Croatia, and that may have affected the voter turnout, which is projected to be lower than in previous elections. On election night on the streets of Zagreb, the comfortable lead to the HD set received mixed reactions. I think Europe shouldn't have allowed this to happen. Europe should not have allowed this sort of awful right-wing turn to develop in Croatia. That's not good. I am disappointed because too few people went out to vote. Croatia looks set to stay on a centre-right political path as the country now braces itself for negotiations on a new government coalition. With the projected result, the HDC could choose to bypass the far-right homeland movement and instead turn to the Croatian diaspora and minority parties. That will all be up to the party to decide in the days and weeks to come. I'm Jorgen Samso in Zagreb for Euronews. Well, we can go to Zagreb now to find out more. Joining us is Vitislav Raus, Assistant Professor of Political Science at the University of Zagreb. Thank you very much for speaking to us this morning. But the Prime Minister took a bit of a risk, didn't he? He pulled forward the elections and then really staked his campaign on the country's response to the coronavirus pandemic, which initially was very strong, but then was sort of slightly marred with disaster. We had the endorsement of Djokovic's tennis tournament, which we know how that ended in disaster, really. Despite that gamble, it does seem to have paid off for the Prime Minister. It did pay off. Um, the turnout was very low. It was under 50 percent, which, of course, always benefits the biggest party and the party which has uh, the most uh, supporters on the ground and the strongest organization in practically every town or village, and that is the Croatian Democratic Union. And uh, it seems that the corona effect um, eventually was actually good for this government because if you look at the preferential votes, the current health minister was actually uh, very much supported in his uh, local electoral district. So now the job becomes of securing a coalition. When we were speaking at the end of last week, it was looking like they might have to get into a sort of coalition with the far right. The strength of the performance from the prime minister's party, does it make it now less likely that they'll have to partner with them? With the results to, uh, today, uh, as they stay in the morning, they don't need them anymore. They could actually muster a majority just with two centrist liberal MPs that they worked together already in the uh, last parliament session. And, of course, representatives of ethnic minorities, the eight MPs of the Croatian parliament that uh, usually support uh, the, the current government. The last four years in power have been hit quite significantly by scandal. Nine of the previous ministers had to resign over, you know, incidences related to corruption. How do you think the next few years will pan out? Will they sort of be able to leave that behind, step forward with new priorities? Well, this is a chance for Plankovic actually to show uh, whether he can find new people who uh, will earn his trust, but, but will also not be marked by uh, corruption. 
It's been a very rocky four years. We'll see what, what the future holds. Of course, um, this gamble was also an attempt to actually bypass the economic crisis, which is looming with the corona crisis, not, for just, uh, not just for Croatia, but most of Europe. And just finally, how will Brussels be viewing the reinstatement of uh, Andrzej Plenkovic as prime minister? Well, they will surely greet it as a sign of continuity and a sign that the EPP party, the British Democratic Union, is uh, still in power and not uh, working together with, um, you know, these contenders from the right, which tend to be sovereignist and uh, rather Eurosceptic. Thank you very much for your analysis, not only just on Friday, but unpacking the results for us this morning as well. Speaking to us from Zagreb, Vizislav Rouse, Assistant Professor of Political Science.